there's no need to drive. There's no need to drive. I understand, but the, what are the wheels for? Just to get out of the garage? Yeah, the wheels are for taxiing from out and in of the garage. We will use, you know, the, the, the rear pushers. We have two pushers in the back to taxi us. But roads are useless. And this is another thing. When you're using an eVTOL, and we're not talking about air taxi, because we don't go into an airport. We don't need to go into an airport. And that will also help us with certification because we're not interested in endangering an aircraft. So this is a very easy to use, you know, and we already spoke to uh, to few uh, airport communities. One of the guys uh, is an airport community. He's a surgeon that is basically interested in going with this to his work, to fly to work, right? And he's living in airport community. Apparently, there are about 70 airport communities in the U.S. Sorry, 70 in Florida and about 800 in the U.S., 768 in the U.S. So we have clearance. We have clearance to land there from uh, the HOA and the HOA bylaws that they have. So and think about it, the amount of noise. There's no, almost no noise. And we have a lot of ways to reduce the noise. Uh, we've already been researching and been communicating with companies to do that. So, so th this is a very practical vehicle. Even if it doesn't do 200 range miles at this point, and will do 60 or will do 100, this is a way easier and local. Would you be able to maybe, if you, take, if you have a longer distance to take, to store in your any compartment some additional batteries? It's something definitely to consider. We didn't think about that. Um, uh, it's something that we will consider. But we also, the idea is that we also creating plugs f that it can be charged in an EV, in a regular ele electronic, you know, uh, electric vehicle. Yeah. So the, we, we, we're going to introduce a few ways to charge it on the go. One of the guys who, who communicated with us, who invested in us, he says, I want to fly and play golf with it. Can I put, you know, my golf? And he said, yes. And, you know, we modified of, uh, you know, from the feedback that we got from all these investors. And this was very beneficial for us. It's not just investment. It's also, you know, people who want to join and want to be on the list who gave us suggestion, ideas. And there are the multiple of things that we are also considering. So, um, a question now. Regarding the person that's actually, quote, driving or flying it, uh, with the term, I guess it would be flying. Would he have to have a... Pilot's license? So Some kind of a license from the FAA? Yeah, so at this point, the, the pilot license, so what we're talking about is uh, we are shooting for LSA, light sport aircraft. So a light sport aircraft means that in order for you to fly it, y as a pilot, we certify as an LSA. This is how we're shooting for it. But, but if you want to fly it, you, the requirements of an LSA is 15 hours on the specific vehicle, on this vehicle, plus five hours of solo flight by yourself to see. In our case, this is way easier to fly than even driving a car because of the intu intuitive and remember, no, not too many obstacles over there and uh, you're not basically, you're not taking off, you know, you're not taxiing, you know, it's, it's so simple. Everything is very, very simple. I mean, I can't stress enough how simple this is to control and, and use. So it's. Uh, so in the future, going forward, let's say 10, 15 years, there are a zillion of them, the Ronies, flying around. Obviously, controllers would be, I think, would be very tough or next to impossible to control the airspace. I can show you how, I can show you how it's going to work. Okay. Yeah. Exactly, corridors. Again, it's very accurate as far as, you know, its position. It's not like, you know, there's not wave way wind. It will always come back to the same location, you know, and there's always the motors are balancing itself. The computer basically balances the motors. The information of how much power to put in each motor. And these, what we're using are, you know, the blades don't change their pitch. It's just the RPM. So this is how it balances itself. 
Okay, so this is one system. There are NASA system. There are many other systems. So this is just one example. And again, this is in uh, you know in the main city in a metropolitan, a congested city. Most of the you know the traffic are not going to be in the main cities. This is how they're going to move payload and and human, right? And uh, and and manned, manned and unmanned. And remember, you have different levels, right? You have different altitudes. It's not like... So you're going to be assigned uh, airways? Yeah, a direct one that you're going to take. Um, and but how do you reserve it? I mean, because uh, many people could be using so, the same route. So this is something that the FAA is figuring out with NASA. They're working on it very diligently. And I'm sure they'll find a way. It's a technological way. And it's really, you know, they just need to figure the protocols there, there are no major technological barriers to that at this point. With time, the machines are going to be more efficient. So definitely more, you know, safer. In any case, uh, we, sh we, we know we're going to be, you know, vetted and reviewed and be scrutinized because it's a new vehicle and obviously everybody is very concerned, you know, how it's going to happen. But, you know, if you look and understand and just make, you know, very simple assumptions, take this that has 10 motors, compare that to a helicopter that has one motor. What happens if that motor or propeller is damaged? There's not many things you can do besides pray. Here you have eight. In our case, it will still land on four if four are damaged. And we have also safety here, which is a parachute that will land the whole aircraft. There aren't too many aircraft, you know, helicopters that use parachute. So we, we're basically introducing more safety features. We understand that right from the get-go, we have to be safer than any other aircraft. And we will prove it. Right. It's a challenging thing, but we believe we can show it. And we're definitely shooting for that. Regarding the parachute, now is it going to be manually triggered or is it going to be automatically triggered? If there are a few ways to go about it. We're still thinking of a few options. We haven't made those decisions yet. But, it, you know, a good question, there's think, uh, and also the construction, everything we're doing is composites, carbon fiber, most of the aircraft today are built from aluminum. We think, you know, if you look at Formula One air, you know, that crashes 320 miles or kilometer per hour and the driver comes out safe, you know, we think we can introduce a safer vehicle than what's out there today. And we know we have to because we need to get the acceptance of the community, not just the FAA. And and you know this is something that we are understand and we take into consideration. And another two things, one other things that we we already know. I think about two three months ago, the FA and the, the House of Representatives introduced two bills uh, for advanced air mobility, one in infra infrastructure for you know UAV and one for you know the support of it. So even the government level, the federal government understand that this is the future. Now, how fast? It really depends on, in our case, on investment, <laughs> in our case, because we can move even faster. We're moving very fast, but we can move even faster. To be honest, there, we don't see any technological barriers for you to go vertical today, as of this moment. There are no bar technical barriers. It's just putting it, making that thing correctly, you know. And, and people sometimes tend to overcomplicate things. And since this is a sort of a complicated or different type of air aircraft, the idea that we're doing is to simplify at that as much as possible and to, to eliminate human error as much as possible. Uh, and there is, you know, there shouldn't be any, uh, there shouldn't be any obstacle of doing that, basically. It's also, I think, the challenge is to sell the idea, not so much the technology, like you said, it's already there or it's going to get better and better. It's also selling the idea for people to accept the fact that they can just fly around. Um, Thousands of people are um, flying around. To be honest with you, we, 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 the other way, people are like waiting already. So many people are asking us, you know, and we wish we can already start selling tomorrow because we know, we, we don't know if we will be able even to, to, uh, to sell all the units that people will order. Because once you sit there, it's, it's an amazing experience. It's different, you know, it's more efficient, it's lighter, it's, it's everything better. I mean, why, why don't you? The question is why you don't, you know, well, why I won't I? Pilots, I guess, pilots with pilot mentality would love this. I would love to fly one of these, but I think a lot of people are scared of heights, 
especially in a small vehicle. So there, I think, with that. Exactly. You don't exactly. have a minimum from the bottom. Exactly. So this is even 10 feet, of, of fear. you got the electric, uh, yeah. you got posts, you got electrical, you got antennas, you got a watch, no, it's but not so... Still, but still, the way we, we're looking at it, we're saying, okay, you remember, you know, I remember the first time I, you know, I took a, a course in, a, in, in, a, uh, in Cessna, and, and when we started, you know, taking off, I lost touch of the ground, I got scared to be honest with you, because I couldn't see the ground, I was just relying on the sky, you know. But here, you're all the time engaged. You, you know, you're very stable, you don't have to fight with the controller. You're going like in an elevator and you see everybody. You see, you know, you can decide what level. So you sit on a cushion of an air, you know, very stable. And again, not too much noise, not too much vibration. And everything is, you know, we will we'll do it, you know, like I was told with my father, you know, there was a feinschmaker, you know, he was a guy who did everything very, in the best quality, and this is how I see it. It has to be made perfect, perfect, all, all the details, and we will pay attention to the details, this is, you know, this is part of how I was brought up. So, you know, you'll feel comfortable, you like what you see, and everything, you know, and, and you can get everywhere, basically, without the need to, to create any road that will destroy the trees or get the animals. I mean, it's just, there's no point, no point. You know, it just breaks my, you know, I'm like, what's the, what's the logic behind that? Why do you need it for, you know? Yeah, good point. By the way, how fast does it go? I'm, I'm sorry, you mentioned it. And yeah, so, no, not yet. So, uh, our uh, uh, cruise flight is 100 miles per hour, our maximum is 140. Um, we, you don't need to fly very fast in order to get faster to the place you need to get because you're not going to be stopped on the way, you know, and there is no fueling, no kids running on the streets, uh, no traffic, so you're flying straight. You mentioned the crowdfunding, and this is, I think Yako mentioned to me on the phone that it's the end of this month. Yeah. Um, so if anybody is interested, what, what, do they, what do they have to do? Yeah, so... So we are on startengine.com. At this point, uh, we are close to closing the race. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, we are 700 or close 700, at 1 million it ends. Uh, the thing is that the valuation is pretty low at this point. This is what we offer because we wanted to give our investors the ability for, you know, for a higher valuation when, to make money. We already know that the valuation, that the current valuation is maybe 10 times more than what we have now. And this is the reason why we also ending it earlier, um, because uh, there's big investors that are coming into play, and we already started to get offers, more and more offers. Uh, so it's closed, I think, in 21, 23 days, something like that, uh, and then we go to you know to a higher valuation. What we're going to introduce it is the price. The introducing the price, the price of the vehicle of, of the one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars for the first six units at the discount price. And then uh, the range will be between one hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars to one to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It depends, you know, which the, the, the type and version of the of the EV tool. Within reason, it's a cheap Ferrari, actually. What? Yeah, and, it's, and I think <laughs> you Ferrari gonna, is more expensive. I think you're gonna like it more. <laughs> okay, he's cool. a pilot. You know, he's a. Oh, I know. Yeah. How are you? Nice, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Oh. So this is the front frame. It's all carbon fiber. Just to give you an idea of a carbon fiber. Pretty, pretty light. This is the front frame. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow it's, it's done. We're already working on the cockpit. Everything works parallel. And a lot of things that we do, we subcontract. By the way, I saw something that with, you got some kind of a deal going with Garmin just recently. Yeah. Some kind of a... Uh, so, yes, we understand that, you know, we don't need to invent the wheel. There are so many amazing, you know, manufacturers, suppliers, companies out there. And we want to partner as much as we can. So partner with Garmin and, 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 and Honeywell and uh, Enfanol. There's so many big manufacturers uh, that has so many tools and so many parts. Mm -hmm. And some of them we just buy as it is. Some of we custom made, you know, for us. Some of them we just modify. And so many things are happening at the same time for us. Uh, we will keep the heart and brain here, obviously, with Doroni. Um, of, of all the you know the cutting edge technologies that we think and all you know the protocols that we're going to introduce but as much as we can we, we like to partners because we see we see this is as a community change it's not just it's it's a totally mindset it's not just okay let's introduce 
a new product. It's really disruptive technology. We feel it's the moment of like before the first iPhone. Because at this point, you know, nobody saw, nobody felt until now a really physical, you know, aircraft that used so intuitively, so easy to use on a daily life. So I already have it, I feel it, and the, my job and the team's job is basically to show, you know, what we have in our mind and we, we do it every day. So the moment it comes out, we understand we need to be accepted by the community and we need the community to understand where we're going with it. But uh, I'm sure that this is a no-brainer as a product, just no-brainer. I mean, people are going to see it and understand how it is it. And we will work with all the authorities and the FAA and work with everybody that's willing to it's, work with that's us. That's quite a challenge because FAA are pretty big and massive and we, they're busy too. They have a lot of things going I, on. So. I know, but FAA is also very interested to, because what happens is now they're certifying the most complicated air taxis, eVTOLs. They're already working with them and they invest, people, inv companies invested, you know, I don't know how many millions already in that. So, and, and we are not going to an air taxi, so it's not, you it know. It should be less complex be less as complex. far as requirements, regulations, exactly. and so exactly. on. Yes, at the European. It's a, it's a European FAA. They work, they partner up together because the SA is more advanced than the FAA in terms of regulations. In Paris Olympic 2024, they are using there you will use EV tolls to commute people to the Olympics. The way time the system will become smaller and smaller and more efficient. Yeah, so I, can, I can show you here. Here they're doing what they're doing here. These are just models of air, you know models of aircraft, big ones what you see here. But we use so what kind of material is this? Fiberglass. We use the same based on that the same technology of carbon fiber. So this is how we make the brackets. Oh, it's quite a big place. Yeah, it's quite a big place. Will you be able to customize color? In yeah, we are we're already thinking about. That's your thing. That's my thing. We have a uh, few options of colors and also a few options uh, of interior and also. Especially if you are in a price range Moonlight. that is a little bit, you Moonlight. know, those who can afford this kind of vehicle. Uh, would want to have it customized with. We we're definitely, we'll definitely think about it. We'll def we, I don't want to say everything for sure, but this is definitely our intention. Okay. So yeah, see these are, some of it, see these are carbon fiber. Look how light it is. Sometimes we peg it, you know, with aluminum as well. It really depends on where we need to put what. It's all, you know, the, our engineers are already um, made all these calculations, simulations, and at this point it's being built now. Okay, Dorn. It's been a real pleasure no, meeting no, you, and thank you, so you very much for uh, giving us time to. Uh, it's definitely talk to my us. pleasure. We'll definitely keep you updating. And yeah, please, so anytime you guys have something that's an important update, I wouldn't mind letting my subscribers know about it, and because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited about it. And you gotta promise me that one of the first ones to test these. Yeah, <laughs> you're in. It's me. <laughs> me, me, Evi Erben. I don't have my shirt. Remember, that's a contract we have. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll invite you to uh, once, once, once this is ready, and we have like the nice, uh, you know, the nice event that we kind of launch it, and we can show everybody you're gonna come in. Of and course. Be, uh, yeah, we definitely gonna hire you. I want to fly it. We will find a way. I don't know if there there I, I said I'm, I want to be the first one to fly it, uh -huh. but but okay, I said I'll take the second one. No, you start saying it. Don't want him to exactly. If something happens, whatever. Okay, are you gonna... test, uh, pilot? Yeah, he was here today. Okay, I'll be the second one. Okay. 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 Anyway, uh, yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm sorry.